My friend recently asked me for advice on how to use solar power to charge up their tool batteries in a shed. So I set out to see if I could put together an all-in-one setup from Amazon that could be reproducible and not break the bank. My goals for the project was to get a wooden shed that could store some tools and keep them dry, obviously a solar panel so no need to run extension cords, a battery powerful enough to recharge the tool batteries so they could be ready when you need them, have remote monitoring so you could turn the charging on and off or even notice when the tool batteries are fully charged, and under a budget of $500. First, let me show you what I came up with before going into each part in more depth. I have this shed with a solar panel on it facing south since I'm in the northern hemisphere, and the solar panel is charging a battery unit, and then my tool batteries are plugged into their respective charging units through this AC outlet right here. So here's where the solar panel connects in. This battery device is from Anchor, who's the sponsor of this video. And when they told me the specs of their new device, it matched this project's goals really well. For example, it's got the multiple AC outputs, remote monitoring, and obviously you can plug a solar panel directly into it. My first challenge for this project was to find a shed on Amazon that wasn't plastic and not too expensive so it could stay outdoors. I knew I wasn't gonna get a two by four shed, but if it was wood at least, I knew I could reinforce it and help it with any extra waterproofing. I don't really know how long it took me to put together because I was watching a football game at the same time, but it wasn't hard and I had it together by halftime. This shed has a roof that's supposed to be waterproof, so after I built it, I left it outside for a few days in the rain, and then I checked it and it was all dry inside so I decided to move forward with this one. So here's the power station that I'm using for this because of the features and the price point. This is the Anchor Solix C300. Let me do a quick overview of it and then I'll show you how it practically fits into the project. Inside of here is a battery and it has AC and DC outputs. You can charge it in four different ways from the wall with a 100 watt solar panel or the 12 volt port from your car and you can also charge it directly with a USB-C. It weighs about nine pounds, so pretty easy to carry around even with that little handle, and it's got spots for a shoulder strap if you pick one of those up. So across these three AC outputs, the combined total is 300 watts of continuous power, which is plenty of power to charge my tool batteries. For example, the battery charger that I have that requires the most amount of power is probably this one, this 80 volt Greenworks one. When it's plugged in and charging, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, it needs about two to 300 watts of power that it's taking to charge up this battery, and the C300 has no problem supplying that power. Now, if you've watched any of my other reviews on power stations, you might know that one of my gripes is the lack of USB-C ports on them, and the C300 has three USB-C ports, which I really like, and two of them are output at 140 watts, and this one in the middle can even input at 140 watts. And it also has a USB-A port, a 12-volt car port, and a light at the top. For this project, I didn't just want a tool battery charger, but wanted the ability to remotely monitor and control it, assuming the shed could be in a Wi-Fi zone. So the power station in there has a smartphone app that allows me to see what's going on. So if we take a look now, it says the battery's at 99%, and there's a little bit of solar power coming in. I'll get more into the specs of the solar panel in a minute, but I like the remote control ability. For example, I was at the doctor's the other day, and I realized that I had not charged my one battery, so I turned on the inverter, like I just just now, from the parking lot. And then after I turned on the inverter, there's a little graph here that shows the power output, so I know the battery was getting charged. And with this graph, you can also get an idea when your tool battery is charged. For example, you can see the constant AC output, and when it drops to zero, like in this case, I know my battery had been fully charged. The light at the top of the unit also comes in handy. I went outside to look at the shed while it was dark, and I could remotely turn on the light and see inside the shed. For the solar panel, I wanted to get one rated at 100 watts, whose dimensions would fit well on the shed, so it could hang off of the top and then overhang a little bit on the other three sides. And if you aren't familiar, this is called a rigid solar panel. It's got aluminum frame and glass on the top. This is the kind of solar panel that's made to be outside year round in any weather. This 100 watt solar panel has monocrystalline cells which have a higher efficiency and it has standard MC4 output connectors which are watertight. To connect this to the power station, you need to get a cable that has MC4 connections on one end and an XT60 on the other. I drilled this hole under the front edge to route the cable up, and then I can connect up the panel and the wires neatly tuck in under the edge of the solar panel frame. On most sunny days, the solar panel takes a few hours to fully charge the power station. The C300 has 288 watt hours of storage. So if the solar panel is producing about 80 watts, that means a full charge would take about three and a half hours. In this configuration, it's also nice because when the sun goes down like it is now and the timeout value you set in the app is reached, the C300 will shut itself down. But then because it's connected to the solar panel, 
once sunlight hits the solar panel in the morning, it'll wake the C300 back up and continue to charge its internal batteries. So if you end up using this setup, there's a few modifications that I would recommend. This thing is actual wood, but the wood's pretty thin, and I even noticed that the front panel looks like it was damaged in shipping. I contacted the seller, sent them photos, and they offered to send me another one. But I didn't want to wait, so I firmed up the base with some scrap wood, and I can tell it made a big difference to the structure. The weight of the solar panel would largely hold it in place, but to secure it further, I drilled holes in some standard solar panel mounting brackets, and then I used the pre-drilled mounting holes on the solar panel to tighten the brackets, then screwed the brackets into the roof of the shed. And I'm pretty happy with how secure it is on the shed, though it's not an ideal solar panel angle, but it's pretty decent at 45 degrees towards the sun. I did clear out this area back here behind the playset. I'm not sure that I'm gonna keep it right here, which is why I have it on rocks versus a more permanent setup. Uh, but there is enough weight on the bottom and I've tried to rock it back and forth. So I don't think it's gonna fall over unless there's some freak wind gust or something. But I am concerned about a few other things like water potentially getting inside and how hot it can get inside of the shed. For example, I noticed on a pretty warm day that the attic area was much warmer than the bottom section. So I decided to move the C300, which I had up there originally down to this top shelf in the shed. And that seemed to be much better, but I do plan to keep an eye on the temperature so it's not getting too hot in here. And it's pretty cool on the app, you can remotely monitor the temperature. And because I don't want any of these tool batteries or the C300 to be charging when the temperatures are below freezing, I'm gonna take all these and store them inside for the winter. So in terms of water potentially getting in there, I'm not concerned about this side because the solar panel is protecting it. On this side of the roof though, I think this will do a decent job, but I did buy some roof caulk and caulk the edges here. And then I smeared some on top of the wood cause you're not really gonna see it. And then I put some roof caulk on the screw holes as well. For the rest of the wood, you could paint it, but I think it looks nice, but I'd recommend putting on some polyurethane or some other protective coating on the wood. Some other fun things you can do when you have an AC outlet charged by solar, you can hook up string lights and turn them on and off with the AC button on the app, or you can do other things like plug in a security camera or even floodlights. Now, if you don't need AC outlets on your shed, like I know at least the DeWalt has a USB-C charging option, you could get this smaller and less expensive C300. It's a DC version. It's also new. So this one's only six pounds, so pretty easy to carry it around. So in terms of USB-C, this one has four of them, and these two are 140 watt rated, which means you can charge or discharge up to 280 watts if you combine them. I ran an experiment where I set my portable fridge to freezing temperatures and froze some water bottles, and then I plugged it into this port and it was able to run my portable fridge which was set at zero degrees Celsius for 23 and a half hours. And it comes with a collapsible light that has light in all directions. And of course you can control it on and off with the smartphone app. So I was aiming to stay under $500 for this project and be able to get everything from Amazon. Here are the current prices and the links for them are down in the description. The main expenses are obviously the power station and the shed, but if you picked up everything here, the total was $449. Also, I'd recommend venting the gable at least on one end if it's getting too hot in the shed. There's some louvered vents that you can get that are under 10 bucks. And I'd put at least one here and see how it goes because you can always add another. 